What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. It's good at night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating the drink. Look at the damn mess. Just a damn mess. Oh, means no. And yes, means no. Hey, people. What is up, people? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's good, people? What is up? What is up? We are here today on the channel. As always, big things happening around these parts so glad to see y'all glad to be with y'all we are about to have some fun today we're about to do big things as always and we're about to talk to some people y'all know my favorite show my favorite show by far is david makes man and we are here for any and all things david makes man so today is a big day we have a major major day today we're going to have an interview with two great and wonderful people who I've been talking with and laughing with backstage. And y'all are going to talk with them and laugh with them with me today as we enjoy ourselves and have a good time and talk all things David Makes Man. So sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves, and let's make this thing happen. So first up, <clears throat> and let me get my good voice on. All right, so first up, we have a young man who has been acting for a while. He, you know him probably from The Wire, where he played Monk. You know him from Ray Donovan, where he played um, um, Raycon and, um, Dave and Ray Donovan. You know him as Lerp in Snowfall. He was even on one of my shows that I watched this year that I loved about John Brown, The Good Lord Bird. But today we're gonna talk about him playing the role of adult David, and that is none other than Kwame Patterson. Hello, sir. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> hello, sir. Hello, Next hello, hello. Up, we have another young man from the great country of Belize, so I've been told. And um, he is um, known for playing Bobby Brown. Yes, that Bobby Brown, you know, he um, portrayed Bobby Brown in the Whitney movie back in, I think, 2015 or 16. He played um, in um, the show The Oath. He was Damon. And you know him as adult JG in David Makes Man. He is none other than Arlen Escarpeta. Hey, I hey, also was saw on your IMDb that you had an episode in one of my favorite old shows, Boston Public. Love Boston Public. That was my that show. That was my first job, actually. That was my, that was my, my first on-screen uh, like TV credit, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> that was my show back in the day with Shia McBride Shia and the McBride, rest yeah. and all yeah, of them. Man. Yeah. That's some good stuff going back there. <clears throat> anyway, so... We're here, we're talking about The Wire. We had the season finale two days ago. And now that the season is done, what do you think about the product that you all brought to the world? Just in, a, in, in one quick blurb, what, what do you think about the product that was put out there for this whole season? Now that it's done, because I know y'all did a lot of interviews, you know, press and promo and all of that stuff before. But it's a little different after everybody has a chance to consume the product. So right. what what do you think about the product that you all put out there this season? Uh, I, I think it was nothing short of amazing, uh, brilliant. You know, I mean, you know, everybody has their opinions of what they think. But I think I think everyone did an excellent job. man. I think from start to finish, I think we told the story the way it uh, needed to be told. It, and I thought we filled in all the gaps, like, um, you know, that answered a lot of questions that need to be answered. Uh, I concur. I think the best way to put season two after watching it is uh, if you know, you know. Uh, David, <laughs> Man, David Makes Man is, it's the real deal. It's it's not watered down. It's uh, it's foolproof. It's it's not for the, for the faint of heart uh, in, in the sense that it's going to force you to really, you know, take a look at yourself in the mirror at the, at the end of the day which is what, you know, we should all be doing all the time. So, uh, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Amen. Cool, cool. Now, I was talking with uh, Kwame earlier when you were late 
our list. I'm, I'm not gonna tell anybody. You really? <laughs> no. I was. Wait, wait. I was fashionably on time. He has on a t-shirt. I have legs. I, have legs. I, 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 I do like the chain, though. I see the chain, and I, I like the sh I, and I like the shirt too. I do. You pop me. Right. <laughs> You know what so, I'm saying? Well, my, my shirt got me. You see what that say? Protect, protect black, black women. women. Yes, I do that in yes. real life. I'm a, I'm a, I got all sisters. I got all sisters. He does. I've been doing that since I was. Since I was all the women do swoon for, you know, um, JG. That, hey, I, I don't know what to do. Make it happen. So, uh, oh, so Kwame was telling me that you all were actually supposed to be a part of season one. And we as that's the first I've heard of that, and that is a, a whoa uh, moment for me. And so, because that what I was going to ask was, how did it happen? Like, how were you asked for these roles? Did your agent say, "Hey, I got this part for you. Come audition. You already got." I mean, how did that go um, with that? Guam, you want to start? No, I'll let you start. Go ahead. Um, so you, and so you're talking about from from the beginning, beginning, not 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 the second time around. Oh, you had two times around. Okay, yeah. Well, no, like, like, like Kwame said, because we were supposed to be a part of season one initially, uh, that audition <laughs> in itself was uh, Carmen Cuba, you know, uh, and it's funny because we all auditioned with the same sides. You remember that, Kwame? We all had the same yep. sides. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you didn't, I think we all auditioned for David initially, uh, and I didn't hear anything right away. Kind of, you know, got quiet for a while. And then, which is very rare in, in the, the entertainment industry as far as acting, I don't know how it was for you, Kwame, but we got, I got a call saying, hey, uh, they'd like to book you for the role. I was like, wait a minute, like, you know, call back this, that, or the other. Like, no, like, you know, it was that one audition that, you, that we had, the tape, and they were ready to go. And I was like, okay. And they said, well, you know, and uh, come season two, your characters would be... Uh, series regulars but you guys get introduced at the end of season one so that's how it initially started i'll, I'll let you take it from there Come on. and then for me it was uh <clears throat> similar you know what i'm saying like uh got the audition the only difference uh with me was that um <clears throat> i almost turned it down what and i yeah and i, I don't think i ever told you this i almost what? turned it down because there at that time in my life i wasn't as confident at, to play a role like this. You know, I played a lot of gangsters and stuff on TV. And so, uh, shout out to my little brother, Dalbert Gibson. Uh, and he said, he said, you're more talented than you think. He was like, let's put this on tape and let's see, you know, and let's just see what happens. So I was like, all right, fine. So I worked with him on the tape and we put it on tape and we sent the tape in. And then like Arlen said, uh, I got the call and I did have to go back in for for another audition, so I got the call Maybe and from Carmen too. for Carmen Cuba's office. And so Carmen, Carmen did uh, did you, you know, yeah? So shout out to Carmen Cuba. And then I I came in, and she pretty much said to me, she said, "Listen," she said, "Your tape was phenomenal." She said, "If you do exactly what you did in this room, this role is going to be yours." And so I went in the room, and they had me do it about four times. I think I did it maybe four or five times in the room. And then even in the room, I thought I lost the job, lost the job because Carmen had gave me a couple of uh, um, like um, directions, and I was kind of nervous. And but I was also in a zone, and I never did any of the directions that she told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I left out the audition like, damn, I didn't blew it. I was like, man. And then we got the phone call, and then yeah, yeah. And let me say this: I'll say this, Quan, because I saw that audition tape. And as confident as I am in myself as an actor, there's no question, no, there's no doubt that you were 100% right for that role. When I saw his statement, mind you, we, we auditioned with the same sides, same material. And I saw Kwame's audition when he showed it to me. This was on the way to the airport. I don't know if you remember Kwame, he showed it to I me do. at the airport. And I said, I told him, I said, Kwame, I said, yo, like, I, I said, I'll, I'll stay home. I said, if we were going out for the same role, I will sit myself down. This is what you're supposed to do. I said, what you just put on tape right there, it's it, it, you're the 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 you're the vessel for this character, a hundred and fifty percent. There was no doubt at all. It's so funny that y'all say that because when I interviewed Nate, 
Nate said he auditioned for Young David. Oh, wow. And he said that when he saw Achille play David's role, he was like, yeah, that's his role. And, <laughs> he, oh, <wow. laughs> and he, but he, he fell into Saren. And I say fell into Saren that everybody loves Saren and Saren's character. They love that character. Um, staring and so forth, but it's so funny that he said the exact same thing. He said, I auditioned for uh David, but I got Saren, and I think it was all it was kismet, you know, everybody and the stars aligned to where they should, um, they should be, um, and so forth. Yeah, did y'all watch season one when it aired? Not like some of the people who watched it afterwards in syndication, did you watch it when it aired? I definitely did because I, I, I didn't even say this before, but I originally auditioned for the role of Sky, so I was watching already. Oh, I was okay. watching. I, need, I needed to see who who booked it because I didn't know Isaiah yet at the time. <laughs> Met him after the fact. You know what I'm saying? It, it was his role for sure. Um, and at the same time, I was uh, I was a big fan of Barry Jenkins. Uh, I loved uh, loved Terrell's work already, so I was already in tune to watch. I was gonna be a, I was gonna be a fan whether I booked this job or not. Yeah. Yep. Same. And, and so with watching the first season, I think we all, if you watched it like those of us as viewers, we were just captivated by these kids that took on and tackled these role, uh, roles and gave these characters so many layers and so many, you know, just their portrayal of these characters. I, when they started, when they talked about the time jump for season two, one of my fears was the fact that we were attached to what we saw these young actors do. And so I kept saying to myself, self, are the adult actors going to play the character or are they going to play the young actors portraying that character, if that makes sense? And so um, when you all came into this after watching season one, how did you tackle that? Was that on the in the back of your mind at all? Or did you sit, just say, no, nah, I got this from the beginning. Nah, I'm a professional. This is what I do. Like, talk about, talk to me about that transition between season one and season two and the portrayal that those young, like, young Kate did for you, JP, and young Achilles did for you, uh, your role for Kwame. Do you want me to go first, Kwame? Yeah, I, I think um, <clears throat> definitely for me, uh, there was a lot of nerves. Um, stepping into the shoes of, you know, older David because of what Achille had already, you know, established in the first season, you know, and he, I mean, he bodied it that first season. Like, it was just beautiful, you know what I'm saying? Like, the layers and everything. So, you know, you already know, you know, because I'm a fan of shows. So I know how I am with shows when shows change sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh, man, come on, why did y'all do that? So I already had that sense of that I knew there was going to be some pushback. But at the same time, it's like, all I can do is do the work, you know, and, and and try to give, you know, the audience the best portrayal of older David that I can. And and a lot of that was just like, you know, like working with Achilles and sitting down and talking with him, uh, watching the show. I think I watched season one, maybe anywhere from like six to eight times I watched the whole season just to try to like really just tackle the mannerisms of, you know, Achille playing young David. And then also with Terrell, you know, I had to tackle some of Terrell's mannerisms because the show is based loosely off of his life. And so, so it was just a lot of that, you know, and, and then, and then Arlen, you know what I'm saying? Like I always say, shout out to Arlen, man. Like if, if I didn't have Arlen there with me, I don't know, I say, I don't know how I would have made it through you that whole season. <laughs> but it, man, listen, it was some rough times, some rough days and some struggles, but you know what I'm saying? You know, Arlen helped, you know, with talking and just, um, he got me into journaling, you know what I'm saying? So journaling a lot of my thoughts. So that way I could process the character and always stay in tune to where I was at, you know, always, so yeah. And I'll say uh, for me, uh, the work that Caden did in season one was special because David carries such a heavy burden uh, on the show with with the weight that he carries, being the man of the house. JG, the Caden, the, the younger JG, the Caden uh, plays, uh, was allowed to be so free and and have this light and fun about him. And most of the work that I'd done previously, or that I usually get cast for, I should say. 
uh, I bring the heavy, you know? And so now I have to try to bring something different. I had to be a little bit more, I guess I had to put, put that baggage down per se. And so what I really did, I tried to approach it in the sense that, okay, you know what, Caden has, he's laid down this foundation. I have to make sure that I walk into this with, with no, with nothing heavy in my mind. JG is, is a, is a ball of fun. He has a, a smile on his face. He's ready to, to play and tease and, and be the little brother that he is. And I, and then I said, if I do that right, when it's time to take that mask off and show the audience what's happening behind the mask, then I'll be good. But I can't show any of that too early. So my approach was really just to, to build on what Caden had, had already done and to make sure that I brought the light that people fell in love with in, with younger JG, that light, that energy and everything else. Um, Arlen, I'm going to stay with you because Kwame just told us, you know, what he had to do to prepare for his role as David and, and how much he had went into, you know, becoming David. What did you have to do to become JG? How did you prepare for this role? Oh, man. Uh, I definitely journaled a lot. Uh, I watched the show as well. I tried to fill in a lot of the gaps that uh, that weren't necessarily on the show. You know, the things that JG might have been going through, the fun that JG had. Uh, JG is a police officer now. How do you, what kind, you know, what does that mean? JG's a father now. You know, what, what kind of father is he? So I really tried to take all of the new elements that were presented with adult JG and bridge them with the work that Caden did from season one. And, uh, you know, just tried to make sure that I brought that light and that love and that energy that people really fell in love with. Like when I first saw JG uh, played by Caden in season one, I smiled. I was like, oh my gosh, this he's hilarious. Like, you know, I want to be, I want to hang out with him. So I want to make sure that as uh, adult JG came came into came into play that he didn't lose that he still needs to have that energy uh, otherwise there's going to be a, a huge departure for the audience you know uh, and if there's going to be huge depart departure then you definitely need to have a lot to say as to why this character jumped mm -hmm. the shark so much uh, but uh, like I said you know if I played that light and that energy properly initially when it was time to take the mask off and let the audience see the heaviness that was happening behind JG's mask, then I would be happy with, with what I did. And um, I, was, I was very, very happy with the work that we put down. Cool, cool. So a lot of the interactions that you all had was some of the best, like those scenes where we had adult JG and adult uh, David on screen were some of the best um, scenes that we had this season. Um, and it started from the beginning when they were on what was supposed to be the Metro Rail, but uh, they were on that train and, you know, they acted like they didn't know each other. And then, you know, JG is all playful and everything. And and, and it's evident that um, you all have a very great working relationship with each other. And so, so talk to me a little bit about what it's like being able to... Um, to put all to emote and get all of that on screen and how did your friendships that you all have with each other already help with that uh, i mean it helped a lot you know um i think as i told you before me and arlen have been knowing each other for shoot, 13 maybe 14 years now so it's like it was just a blessing and you know and and, and, and shout out to the man upstairs that uh he put us together because he knew that our you know this is that's me and him in real life. Like we joke all the time. All we do is crack jokes. Like they have been all joking. We do is back. They have been joking backstage. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's literally what we do. We get together. You know what I'm saying? So they would, you know, so it just, it just, it just transferred to television, and it just made it, made it beautiful, made it, made it organic. You know, so yeah. So I'll let you speak on it. Uh, I think that, and I agree with you, Kwame. It definitely made it organic, and it made it real. And I think what it really did for us, it allowed us to already have our own memories and history and things that we could tap into to play mm -hmm. these, to play, you know, older uh, JG and older David, because uh, especially during COVID, you have to remember season one, yeah. they just had a regular season. They got to hang out. They got to 
go to go to the theme park and you know and just really bond yeah now Kwame and myself we we've been bonding for years on end because we've been friends forever and a day so for us it went hand in hand to you know to bring our own experiences our own energy and literally just like you know cut and paste that into the worlds of JG and David so it uh it, it definitely was a blessing for sure it wasn't uh wasn't by by our plan but yeah definitely the man yeah was this. exactly okay hey, amen Okay, so now we got to get to the tough stuff, the, the hard stuff, the tough stuff. So I'm going to go right down. We're going right up down the deep end. You touched on this a little bit, um, Kwame. I'm, we're just going to go right there. There has been some viewer and some fan backlash. There mm -hmm. have been some people who have had, you know, issues with the time jump. And they're like, oh, no, I don't like adult David. I don't like adult JD. I don't like the time jump. Everything's awful, yada, yada, yada. I want the kids back. And there has been some of that. Trust me, I know because I see it in my comment section of my reviews. And it's going for me. I'm just reviewing the show. <laughs> but uh, what do you say to those fans? And some people you're just not going to reach anyway because they are just that you know hard headed. But what do you say uh, to fans that had that um, that had those issues with the show? What do you say when people ask you about? the problem that people may have had with the time job. um for me it's just that like listen i i appreciate everyone who tunes in whether you like it or you don't like it because we're not here for everybody to like you and for everybody to love you you know what i'm saying it's just it's just that simple you know no matter what it is in life you know what i'm saying whether you're just walking around and like regular life i'm sure there's somebody out there right now that just don't like me as a person you know and you know, <laughs> so they don't like you because once you get the snoop in that truck, we go never like right. you. You got snoop in that truck. We not gonna like you because you work for Omar. We don't like Omar. No. <laughs> not Omar. You work for Marlo. Excuse me, not Marlo. Omar. Oh man, Marlo. but yes, I mean that's just really the thing is that like all you can do, you know, what I'm saying is put out good work. And you pretty much leave the rest in the guy's hands because, you know, like I say, you can't please everybody no matter what. You know, there's people who win Oscars and you hear, and you hear people be like, I don't know how they won an Oscar. They was terrible in that movie, you mm -hmm. know, so it's always going to be that, you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, so, you know, I mean, I, I mean, that's really all I can really say is that, like, you know, I have no you know, no um, negative thoughts about it. You know what I'm saying? It's always positive thoughts for me. And I'm always, like I say, I always appreciate anybody who watches comments, whether the comments are negative or positive, you know, I appreciate them all. So, yeah. Um, I'll say this. I read the comments because I read comments. I do. I read, I read <laughs> comments. Um, and like Kwame, I appreciate all of it because it's constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. It's one that you can't take you know, too heavy, whether it's good or bad, you know, you take it the exact same way. You, you, we're the first over there to do a job. Um, and I understand where a lot of people would feel some kind of way that, okay, you know, you've gone from them younger to now them older and may not be able to adjust right away. And I think part of that needs to be understood as you have to get to know them as adults to really appreciate who they are as well. You can't, you can't, you know, Peter Pan has to grow up at some point, you know, and mm -hmm. when he grows up, that's when it really gets interesting. Um, but that doesn't mean that any of the things that you know from from season one, the the things that you fell in love with as as the younger David and the younger JG goes away. That's our job as actors to make sure that we bring that with us. Now, if we didn't do that, let me know, you know, so that way I know I can grow and get better. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that th that's the case. I think it's more of a uh, you're just so in love with them as 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 little kids, you know. It's it's, it's a puppy. Puppies are so adorable when they're little. You, mm. know, you can you can hold them. You can you can coddle them and and everything like that. As they get older, it's different. You have to learn okay. to love them a different way. And adult David and adult JG have different issues, different um, different di different things that they have to deal with as as they as they get older now, you know. And to have the show stay stagnant in that world is to me, it's one-sided. Mm. You know, it's 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 a, it's it's called, you know, you gotta evolve, you gotta grow, you gotta build. Now, whether it happened too fast or too slow, 
that's up to the viewer. But you know, I think one of the things that I noticed about the season was, um, especially with adult David, there was a change and a difference, which was there was a conscious change because when he was at the bottom of the pool, there was a change, yeah. a almost deadening or killing off of young David. And I and I look at the season from episode eight everything before episode eight and then everything after episode eight because episode eight to me kind of changed everything about the trajectory of adult David, how we looked at adult David and even how he interacted with everybody else um, on the show. So I, I, I love, like you said, the growth that these are dynamic characters and they're not just static, like, you know, <clears throat> people want it to be. And I think let me can I say something real quick? And I and I think also too, like uh like one of the comments that I would hear a lot and I want to touch on it real quick is that like people were like, I don't understand why um the adult David acts like the younger version, like his mannerisms or whatever. And and I think that like people forget that like there are a lot of people out there still dealing with their childhood traumas. And that, cause I know people that are adults that are 40 years old who, who still act like their younger selves when certain situations happen, mm -hmm. you know, they get caught, you know? And so that's a real thing. And, and, and I applaud Terrell and them for, for touching on that. You know, even though I get, I get a lot of people didn't understand it, but I applaud Terrell touching on that. And then also I would get people to be like, oh, I don't like how David uh, treats JG when they were younger. You know, he always protected them. And now it's like this distance between them. And again, sometimes families outgrow each other as we get older. You know, sometimes you don't have the same relationship that you had when you were kids with your, you know, your older. You know, I have a friend right now, her and her sister, when they were young, they were best friends. Now they barely speak. You know, they don't even speak. Like, you know, it's just, it, and, and it just happens, you know. So yeah. I think like, you know, it's just the understanding that like, they're, they're touching on real life issues and real life situations. Exactly. And I think some, yeah, so yeah. I, to me, I thought it made so much sense to have you as adult David still having the same mannerisms of young David, because that's believable. Yeah. I mean, there are mannerisms and things of how we carry ourselves that we've been doing since we were children and they right up and, you're, and so some of those things like people talk to me about oh i remember season one i had to explain the whole book bag phenomenon because <laughs> now, like, that's a miami thing we wear book bags all the time it becomes attached to your body when you're in miami they were like, so like why does adult david still have a book bag i was and i in my mind i'm like i have a book bag and i'm like, <laughs> <laughs> my because that's what we do. We got, you know, so it makes sense. You know, the whole I'm a smile every time. And even JG's character, he's still playful. He's still jovial. He's still, you know, he always played around with David. That the funniest scene to me with JG is where he said, "I'm gonna call Mama." He called, <laughs> and so, boy, say, "Mama, David out here cussing." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was real. Even though they're adults, you still have those young, um, playful moments, um, and so forth. Now, this show tackles a lot of um, heavy, heavy issues in a beautiful way, which makes people like it. There are three issues that I want to definitely talk about with you all. The first one, which um, maybe I'm just being selfish, was important to me when I first watched the show was the portrayal of uh, the Rainbow Coalition, as I call it, but the Black LGBTQIA plus community and how it, the characters on the show weren't just caricatures or one or were not fantasized. They were just allowed to just live and be them. And even more of that season two, there isn't this attempt that you see on some shows and movies where they try to spotlight and highlight and have everything centered around this character just because they are LGBTQIA+. On this show, they could just be them and just be in their world and be a part of the community and not have to worry about being ostracized or being, you know, castigated or have any, you know, bad things, you know, happen to them. They could just live. And yeah. so 
and be normal. And so I wanted to, um, and a lot of times when you play, and you spoke about this earlier, Kwame, people get used to you playing roles where you are a thug, or you're a gangster, and you're hard, and they're like, wait a minute, how do you go? You know, from that, and it's all still in acting, but some people may have uh, apprehension doing that. How do you prepare for that? Because if you remember in season one, JG was the one who was very comfortable around Mr. Light, very comfortable. Right. Yeah. Uh, whereas David was always kind of like mm, awkward, you know, and everything. And so now you see uh, them as adults where, you know, that's who they grew up with. That's a part of the you know, family and everything. And so just speak to what, how the show kind of tackles those issues and what it's like being able to portray these roles and their importance. Go ahead, Arnold. I said a lot. I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> you good, yeah. I, I think I think David makes man. I don't. I'm not going to use the word tackle, because to me that that sounds harsh. I think David makes man allows you to see love in a real way. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that romantic love. You see that family love. You see the 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 love that that David and JG have for have for Mix Elijah. You see the love that Robin. And, uh, and Gloria have for one another. You see our, our brothers and our and our sisters that they adopted that are living their own life. And you have this dynamics of these, all these different types of people. Forgive me, that's my puppy making noise. Um, but you have all these different types of people that are loving one another with no issue at all. And like you said, without being or doing anything special, they're just living mm -hmm. their lives. And David Makes Man does a good job of allowing the audience to see that in a way that it's not romanticized, that it's not, um, you know, it's not garnish on the side, you know, it's, it's not the one role or the one character. No, it's real life. And it's a mm -hmm. reflection of how a lot of people live their lives every single day, you know? Um, I have a sister that's gay and I don't talk about it. I don't say, hey, my sister's gay. No, it's just my sister. Now, if we have a conversation, it'll come out, but I don't have to, you know, put anything on front street. And I also don't have to put anything in my back pocket and hide it. It's just my sister, you know, and until mm -hmm. you get to know me or get to know my sister or be in our circle, you know, and, and see how our lives play out, you don't, you don't think anything of it. And that's what David Makes Man does. It doesn't do anything to make you like, oh, I got to watch this show to see who so-and-so is going to sleep with tonight. It doesn't matter, you know? It's people loving one another and it's um it's family. That's the best way to say it. It it yeah. it it, ex it shows our LGBTQ community as exactly what they are. Family, not an outsider, not you know, someone knocking on the door asking to come in or someone that's in the closet, quote unquote, trying to come out. No, they're in the house with us. It's family and that's how it should be. Yeah. I mean, amen to that. I mean, I don't even know how to follow that, but <laughs> you said it perfectly. But, but yeah, just to add a little ice on the cake, it's like, you know, kind of like what he's saying is that David Makes Man allows everyone to see themselves in one of the characters. You know, every single character, you can see yourself as one of the characters, you know? So it, it allows you, like he said, to, to be brought into a family, you know, a family that's full of love, no judgment, you know, no expectations, just family and love. That's and it. whether and whether the character is straight or gay, you might yeah. be a straight man and find images of yourself in Mix Elijah or or Robin yeah. or or Saren. You know what I mean? It's not. Yep. There, no one's confined. To I mean, David did try to kiss Saren at one point. How did that go? <laughs> what, what was that <laughs> like? <laughs> I, I think David told the therapist that Saren tried to kiss me. Wait, y'all sure? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. the other another topic that uh, we talk, I talk about a lot on my channel because I go a lot, I do a lot of politics on this channel. Is all three of us are black men living in these yet to be United States of America. And we they tackle the issue of policing and the issue of police profiling and the relationship between the black community and the police. And some of the most poignant 
conversations and arguments that were on the show happened with adult JG and adult David talking about this uncomfortableness around someone out of the community, out of the hood, going and becoming a police officer and just unpacking that. I'm going to be moment of self-disclosure. I hated the the um, guilt that they kept trying to put on JG <laughs> when I kept saying, well, he didn't do anything. And why is he the scapegoat for all of the police system when he didn't do anything but go and help people and then yeah. get shot? And um, so, um, yeah. I talk to me about that that part of the show because that was a major part of um, this season as well. That that the issue tackling, you know, just policing and the police in the black community. I I think at least for me, um, outside of the show, is that you know, because I've talked about this uh, plenty of times um, on other platforms, is that I think the the biggest issue with policing in the black communities is that we no longer have beat cops. When I was growing up, we had beat cops. We had cops that walked around the neighborhoods and they knew who everybody were. They knew who the knuckleheads were. They knew who the drug dealers were. They knew who the, the kids who was just outside playing basketball, just chilling, hanging out you know, in front of the store. And so now we don't have that. So there's a disconnect between the community and policing. And so now these, you know, you just, you have a, a group of kids just got finished playing basketball and they stand in front of a corner store and their cops are jumping out on them and throwing them up against the wall and patting them down. And then somebody ends up getting shot or gets, you know, beat up or beat down. And I think that's one of the biggest issues. Now, whether we don't have the funding anymore or I don't know what that is, but they need to interject policing back into the communities. They need to put B cops back into the communities, cops that walk around the neighborhood so that they know who you are, you know? And I feel like, you know, police brutality has always been there. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, but what I will say is when we had beat cops, it limited it a lot of the police brutality, at least in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak on like, you know, when people got pulled over in cars, but but as, as far as like in the neighborhoods, I would literally watch, you know, some of the cops, they knew they knew you by name. They tell you, they'd be like, oh, yo, go home. Well, y'all, y'all been hanging around here too long. Go home, and then you just go home. You just leave, but they ain't just like slam you up against the wall and do a lot of that stuff. So, I think like that was kind of what uh, with David and them growing up in the projects. You know, just creating that backstory is that you know we were dealing with a lot of you know um, police brutality and, and 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 cops in the neighborhood and and, and racial profiling, and so. David, you know, always had this, you know, this um, underlying um, anger with JG about becoming a cop, you know, because it's like after everything we've been through with cops, this is what you decide to do. You know, so I think, you know, it's a lot of that, you know, going from real life and then integrating into the show is like, you know, I think that's what the that was the underlying issue with uh, David and JG. And I'll say. With JG becoming a police officer, JG as a whole, I think JG and who he is, he's really romanticized a lot of what he what he expects his life to be. He's not the best father. He's not the best husband. And to be honest, he's probably not the best police officer because he doesn't, he's he's just learning. You're just seeing Jay-Z, JG now learn the full weight of what it means to be a black man and a police officer. You're also seeing him learn the full weight of what it means to be a father and a husband in those dynamics. But specifically with him being a police officer, um, I think the show really allowed to see how much there is a lack of transparency and accountability on the side of, of, of the police. And Kwame said the right word, disconnect. You know, JG being, being, being of the veil and from the veil he feels some kind of way about Shalimar, you know, and and 16 and being tried as an adult and not, you know, being able to live out the rest of his life. Meanwhile, his fellow officers are applauding in another room that they're trying this young man as an adult because they shot one of us. That disconnect, that's line, one of us. We, you know what I'm saying? That that bridge is is so far and wide of black people and police officer. And I think the, the way to build that bridge, in my humblest of opinions, 
it's not necessarily just like, you know, the transparency and accountability. I think it's, you know, black officers understanding that you are still a, a part of this community, whether you like it or not, you know? Um, when you take that uniform off, if your fellow officers do, don't recognize you, you're just another black man, whether you like it or not. You know, you don't mm -hmm. get to transform completely when you put that uniform on because the truth be told, and we've all heard this before, that, you know, you can take off the uniform, but we can't take off our skin. That's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's a yeah. heavy weight to carry. Mm -hmm. And the show really does allow us to see that. And, you know, I think Kwame said it right, that that disconnect, you know? I mean, we also saw inside of the police uh, when he went back to work after having given the money back to um, to Shalomar's defense fund and how right. they treated him. Um, you think he probably regretted that? He might have regretted it in the sense that he didn't expect that backlash. Um, he might have even regretted it again when he went to go see Shalomar and didn't get mm -hmm. what he expected, you know? Maybe mm -hmm. he thought he expected a pat on the back, but that was a reality check for JG that even with this amount of money, you cannot fix this hole that is, you know, and this weight that, that is being a black man and being incarcerated in that world because the odds are forever stacked against you, whether you like it or not. And money can't fix that. Defense can't fix that. That's real life. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 sir, like I said, those were some power. That moment when JG was surrounded at the field by all of those people, I was just so upset. I was incensed. I was throwing things at the television. I was bad. I was cussing with um, JG. Listen, I was doing it all. Shout out to the chat, too. The chat is going, and the people are in the chat. They are asking 8,000 questions. And there's, I don't even know if y'all can see the chat. No, but, um, no, I can't. Oh, man. If you click on, there's the. Uh, there's a, a tab probably oh, I see chat. chat and one tab says private chat one part says live chats or live comments or whatever oh and wow there's a lot of comments see, oh my yeah they've been listening the people are watching it they have been commenting and they are really <laughs> I still don't see I still don't see the uh, the chat thing that y'all talking about uh, at the bottom of your screen Kwam, there's a uh, you'll, you'll see a thing that says chat click that and then go to comments See, at the bottom of my screen, all I have is Cam, Mike, Share, Stop, Cam, and Mute. Are you still Android? <laughs> <laughs> are you, I'm on a, are you, I have an Android. I do. No, I'm, <laughs> me, me too. No, I'm on, a, I'm on a Mac. I'm on my Mac. Oh, you're on your laptop? Yeah, I'm on my laptop. Um, On the laptop, you should see – hold on. It should be there. Um, Probably on the right hand side, there's a column it, at the top. It should say private chat or comments. That's weird. I don't have that at all. I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's all good. We'll it out, but <laughs> just know there. There is a lot of people giving yeah. up. Out. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Oh, God. Oh, I was about to say, where did oh, I go? I'm back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So and the last big thing that we talked about on this show this year, and it was a major part, was uh, mental health. Mm -hmm. Shout out to um, April Grace, who played the therapist. Yes. Beautiful Black Queen. Listen, that was a beautiful Black woman. Oh, on man. The show. Yes. Um, screen. And I loved every moment of her. And listen. And I, I, let me give you your kudos now, um, Kwame, before I forget. It's very hard to have one scene or a whole episode and have everyone captivated and have you not wanting to turn away. That's a difficult thing because in most shows, especially in today's society, people's interests go away like, listen, y'all got to give me something else. But episode eight was pretty much you were just right there in that therapist's office the entirety of the episode. And I got to give you some kudos for your Thank acting, you. what you did you. in order to have us. I mean, I was literally like this <laughs> the whole episode. <laughs> uh, cause to me, that was my favorite episode. Episode eight yeah. is by far my favorite episode. I give you Thank kudos you. for that, just like in season one. If you remember, I think episode eight was <laughs> the episode where Achille went off on... Um, or Raiden's character, and he had that major uh, blow up against Raiden mm -hmm. and yeah. T and whatnot. And that the, the level of emoting he did there was 
I was like, wow. Anyway, yeah. but I can give you kudos for that. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank but you. We know that David has some mental issues. We know that Trent has mental issues um, as well. And um, and we tackle the fact that we do need help mentally. Our mental health is as important as our physical health health um, is. And um, what did what was it like? going through the process of acting that out or portraying someone who has all of these perks and idiosyncrasies and going through this whole mental health thing. What was that like? Uh, for me, it was, it was, it was hard, you know, um, you know, I definitely, uh, struggled, uh, before David makes man with, um, you know, vulnerability and just, um, you know, uh, uh, expressing my emotions and feelings and different things. I, I, I tend to, um, you know, keep a lot of things in or, or hold a lot of things in, you know, and, and then, I, you know, I'll express what I feel like I want to express. But then I'll also hide, you know, the things that I don't want people to see because a lot of times as men, you know, we tend to feel like we're weak or we're, you know, soft or if, we, if we're too vulnerable, you know. And so uh, playing this character, I had to tap into places that, you know, I didn't necessarily want to go, but I had to go. And sometimes it would, you know, uh, take me places that uh, it was deeper than I thought, you know, and didn't realize that I had things in me that needed to come out, you know, that I hadn't, that I had suppressed for so long. I mean, we would, we would do certain scenes and that therapy scene was one of them where I would, uh, I wouldn't be able to stop crying. So after, you know, Kyle, you know, shout out to Kyle Adrian Scott, um, who directed that episode. Uh, there will be scenes, times when he would say cut and I would still be crying, you know, and I couldn't stop crying. And he would just give me time. He just say, take your time, brother. Just, you know, just get yourself together because sometimes, you know, we're we're dealing with things that sometimes we don't even realize we're dealing with. And like I say, that we have suppressed for so long, you know, like we from the time from the time you're you're young for the most part, you know, you're taught to be tough. Don't cry. You know, your mom is whooping you and she's telling you, stop crying. Why are you getting a beating? You know, like, like she's inflicting pain on you, but at the same time telling you to stop crying. You know, you scrape your knee on the ground, you bleeding and your cousin or your brother, somebody was like, are you good? You be all right. Stop crying. And so that continues to go with, as we grow, as we get older and older, and, and we don't realize that because for us, we've heard it so long, it just becomes second nature. It becomes normalized. And so David Makes Man um, just brought out a lot of those things in me that I didn't realize that I had suppressed so deep down in it. And I like to say that like uh, working on David Makes Man for me was like going to a free masterclass and a free therapy session because it allowed me to break down a lot of walls that I had you know, and that I struggle with, um, you know, playing this character. So I, I, I thank again, Terrell, again, for allowing me into this space and allowing me to grow as an actor, as a person, and as a man. Yeah. Okay. Anything you want to add to that, Arlen? Uh, I think Kwame said it very, very well. I'll just add that uh, all of our characters are flawed in a certain way. You know, I uh, think in that therapy session, you heard the therapist, you know, touch on uh, Gloria still mm -hmm. being an addict in a different way. Um, you know, uh, what, 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 what she's dealing with, JG's baggage. I mean, we're all, every character on this show is, is, is traumatically affected and growing and, you know, going through growing pains, you know, mm -hmm. uh, one, way, one way or another. And they're, they're just all dealing with it in different ways. Um, that mental health aspect of our show is one that I think everybody can relate to. Everybody can touch on and everybody can learn and grow from it. It's something that we all need to really pay attention to, especially, uh, and kudos to you, Kwame, that scene, taking care of your inner child, finding out what that Thank inner you. child really needs, asking that inner child, what do you need for me right now? You know, um, as we get older, we kind of harden that part of ourselves and we're forced to grow up and be adults. And so it's important that, you know, you look back, you know, just just mm -hmm. like, you know, Kwame and, uh, and older David did look back and touch that younger child and give him a hug, give her a hug and find out what what uh, what they need. 
Yeah. I'm still mad at Kwame for going off on young David in that car. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, God. What's happening? Why is he going? <laughs> Why can't you sit there just like, why you always got to talk to me like that? I was, I was snot bubbles and all. Just break it down. Why you got to talk oh, man. Like, I'm like, no! Why? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we get out of here, a couple quick hits before we get out of here. I know y'all are busy people and y'all got a whole lot of lot stuff to do. So, favorite scene to film? Favorite scene to film? Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's a tough one. You want me to go first? I know mine. Yeah, yeah, you go first. I think Was it when you bust down Shella um, and see this? No, in episode two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, no, my uh, my favorite scene in the film had to be JG at the Ville, where he's surrounded by everybody, you know, just completely falling apart, trying to figure out where he stands, who he is, you know, as a man, as a police officer, and having his brother, you know, have his back, and then his mom come from the side, like that, that was a special thing for me to, to shoot, and then watching it, I was affected again, like, man, I really feel for this brother, but he needs to figure this out. At the same time, you know, I, I couldn't even pick a side. I don't know if I was on JG's side or on the side of the people because, you know, it's 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 so layered. But, yeah, that was my favorite scene. Favorite scene in the film? Come so on. I think my, my favorite scene would be with Travis, Mixed Elijah, is the scene when Travis comes outside and I'm sitting on a little green um uh, thing. I can't think of what it's called right the now. Little little, box yeah, the little green transformer. All the time. Yeah. Yeah, like that scene, even though they don't show that version, Travis made me cry so many times when we were shooting that scene that it was just like, man, it was like, it's just like. Oh, he, he says, um, what color is your heart today? Yeah. He yes. says, pick it a little light blue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, was like, yeah it was just, yeah. yeah. So it was like, he, he made me cry for real, like a, quite a few times. Cause you know, we shot the, you know, we do a bunch of takes and it was just like, man, he's, he's so good. Travis is just, uh, it's just like, it's just like beautiful. It's like art when, when Travis comes on the screen and when you're in a scene with Travis, man, he, he pulls you in so deep and it's just like, man. So I, I always loved working with Travis. So yeah, that was my favorite scene. Favorite one, hardest scene to film. Most difficult scene to film. That for episode eight, that whole episode, like literally, I was exhausted. I was tired. I was. Like, <laughs> I, I was, was say, exhausted. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, listen. Anything. We shot. We did. We shot literally, uh, twelve to fifteen pages a day, for six days straight. And when I tell you, I barely slept. You know, what I'm Arlen would stay up with me till like three in the morning and run lines with me and then i had to be on set at 6 a.m so like when i tell you i was exhausted tired learning all those lines all that dialogue and it was a, and it was so much other stuff that they even cut out so like it was way more stuff that we did that you don't get to see because they got to edit around and cut certain mm -hmm. scenes out and stuff but man so that was my hardest yes and i think my hardest scene to shoot was uh probably my stuff at the police station uh with uh the stuff with shalomar and jg not being able to fully say what I wanted to say. Um, JG isn't mature enough to fully, I guess, speak up for himself. Like, I wish he said more to, to his fellow officers, you know, and 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 didn't necessarily just walk out. That was hard for me to, to, to shoot because I wanted him to be like, no, you know, and really check them on, on, on what it is to be a black man and what that means for, for a young 16-year-old mm -hmm. kid like Shalomar. So... Um, but that's also the beauty of that scene that you know that he doesn't say anything. So yeah. Favorite scene to watch that you saw when you watched it back. What was the scene that you were like? Damn, I did that. Oh, we did that. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Favorite scene to watch. <laughs> uh, that might be. I think I would say the scene with me and Arlen because when we was in the bathroom, and mm -hmm. because yeah, we shot that scene at the end of the day, and we had. 30 minutes to shoot it. 30 minutes. Most scenes, you got a couple hours to get it. They said, y'all got 30 minutes to do this scene. And me and Arlen, and, and we both was like, 
I don't know how this gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> but we saw it, we was like, wow, it looked great. Like we we did our thing. Yeah, 100 percent So that was my favorite scene to watch. That I didn't know how it was gonna end up. <laughs> I think my favorite scene to watch, Kwam, had to be our scene with us, uh, where David and JG meet after the subway at, at, at home in the kitchen, where uh, I think where the audience first sees them actually talking to each other as brothers again and that that playfulness um Mm -hmm. to me it felt like a season one moment it felt like you had young Akili and and, uh and and young Caden you know playing Mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing and that made me feel like okay we're doing this right because it set the tone that uh we were going in the right direction and we had picked up you know what we needed from from the younger versions of ourselves to bring the season two yeah okay Okay, we almost out of here, but a couple things. What what does Kwame like the most and like the least about David? And what does Arlen like the most about JG and like the least about JG? Good question. Uh, yeah, no, that's a tough I one. Huh? That's I did. I did. <laughs> well, well, definitely what I like the most about David is uh, it allowed me to grow as a character, you know, um, as an actor, I mean, it allowed me to grow as an actor. Um, it, it pushed me into to, to places, like I say, I had never been pushed before. Uh, it allowed me to grow. Um, I think the the least thing, ah, that's a tough one. What is the least thing I like? Because I loved everything about this character. Well, what, so I'm trying to think about, about David. What would Kwame change about David? If you can't think of the thing like the so, least. So, okay, so yeah, so the thing I guess I would change about him is that like uh I would I would want David to express his feelings more, you know, like not be so closed off, you know, not have so many um walls up. You know, he gets as you see on the show, he gets into a lot of moments where, you know, um he's like he's like, Oh, y'all moving, but he doesn't really say much about it, you know, or he allowed, you know, he's try he tries to speak and a lot of people cut him off a lot of times when he's talking and he doesn't correct that. He just kind of like, you know, closes up, goes into a shell. So I would love for David to be more open, more expressive and just say, hey, guys, I'm here. Listen to me. I want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so just hear me, you know. I respect okay. that. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead, Arlen. Uh, I think what I love most about JG is his charisma and the way that people are drawn to him. I think that's a very special and good thing that, you know, that he has that I think we can all like, you know, liken ourselves to like, if we want to be that type of person. Um, What I like least about JG is he hasn't learned how to navigate things properly yet. And he continues to paint himself into a corner that is almost impossible to get out of. You know, whether it's, you know, giving Shalomar the money without talking to his wife first, uh, you know, jumping the shark with, with Shella, you know, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot. He, he keeps painting himself into a corner in a way. That, I just you know, want him to stick up to Trish and not let her do to that young. I was so upset with Trish in this last episode. <laughs> really? That's so interesting. I didn't like how she treated Trin. I just thought it was so horrible. I felt so bad for Trinity now, um, when you, she went did, home. Did, did you think you wanted her to, to 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 baby her a little bit more? No, I didn't want her to baby her. But when she went in on her and then she said, oh, I love you. And I was like, I love you. After you done, the girl was really trying to express herself. And in the midst of her expressing herself, she lashes out and goes in off on this guy. And I was like, wait, oh God, what's happening here? I didn't understand that. Then she took the key from her and I and I was like, well, what is her issue with David and why does she have a big problem with her going to her uncle's house? I didn't understand that either. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I, I think, and I know we were- And I wanted time. JG to step in and protect his daughter. I wanted JG to step in and say, no, nah, you're not, we, no, we need to just sit here and be you happy see, that our daughter is home. That's one of those things. JG has to learn how to use his voice in that moment as well, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but in that, so crazy. In that moment, I really, I thought that Trish did the right thing. I thought that she made sure not- that, that, that Trent knew that she was wrong initially. You know what I'm saying? You can't, that's not how you express yourself by running away. 
You know, this is what that causes. And I think that she could have did that later. I think in the immediacy of the child being home, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That I don't mm. think that would be time to oh, no. charge. You know, I think sometimes we want to be hard all the time, but sometimes, obviously, there was a reason that the child ran away. Yeah. And you don't want to continue to give them the ammunition that they need to try to do that again. That's true. So in the immediacy of them coming, you, they need to be brought back. You know, we got the old biblical tale of the prodigal son. When he came home, the dad didn't just say, oh, why you went out there and spent all the money? He embraced him, you know, made dinner for him and treated him well. So he knew he always had a home. And if you don't teach a child that they always have a home, they're not going to want to go back to that home because they don't feel safe. That's interesting. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, I, mean, that's, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the reversal would be bad, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah. would, I'll make you dinner later. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, last two questions. The first question is, um, what should we take away from this season as a whole? What should we take away from this season as as a whole? That mental health and therapy is. Uh, you know, um, important, you know what I'm saying? It's important to, uh, to check in on yourself. It's important to check in on your friends. Uh, and that, uh, that, like I say, therapy is a real solution, you know, and I hope a lot of people take, uh, take away from that, you know, watching the show that, um, that makes them want to reach out and, you know, to whoever, whether it's, you know, you reach out to a therapist, you reaching out to family and friends to check in on them, you know, um, but yeah, mental health is, 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 uh, is a serious thing. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't think I'll, I'll add anything anything to that other than loving yourself is important. You really got to yeah. love yourself through and through and forgive and forgive yourself. How about that? Forgive yeah. yourself for whatever you haven't forgiven yourself for. Yeah. Cool, cool. Any questions for me? Anything y'all want to ask me? The man in the chair. <laughs> uh, let me think. Let me think. I, I guess I guess we'll, well, I, I ask you uh what two questions? What was your favorite scene of the season, and what would you like to see different? Okay. Uh, my favorite scene was the scene in the field in the sprinklers with David and Sarah and shadow boxing and fighting where they had that, that was a dope scene. Jeremy Pope version of yeah. Fire September playing. Um, um, it was just cool. Um, yeah, some people yeah. thought it was very homoerotic. I didn't really take it that way. I just saw it as two good friends yeah. just reconnecting and being close in a way that we a lot of times don't get to see black men bond and be close and just be friends um, yeah. without people taking it to a whole different place. And so that was my favorite. That was probably my favorite scene uh, because we miss the whole season. We have been saying, where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? <laughs> and we finally got Sarah. So I, I was so glad to see that. Um, and you said, what would I change? Mm -hmm. I think... I think that there was, and I talked about this um, on a couple of reviews, and we do discussion panels as well. Me and a couple other reviewers, we do discussion panels on the show. Um, is sometimes with the time jump, there were some dots that were connected. Like I loved episode two that filled in some blanks that we needed, but I felt like we could have. I felt like it should have been a longer season, and they could have given us a couple more of those episodes that filled in the blanks because I would love to know how JG went from being JG to being a police officer. You know what I'm saying? That whole span of time. What really did happen with Sarah, you know, while he was gone uh, and how was he in Miami all the time and still didn't try to connect with David. Which right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so forth. Uh, tackle, if we're going to tackle, I, I thought one missed opportunity that I think was missed and it just probably wasn't enough time. I really thought they were going to explore dementia and Alzheimer's and what um, mixed alignment because that is a very big and prevalent issue yeah. with the black community. I know I've dealt with that personally with yeah. my own family yeah. and I felt like 
being able to tackle that and knowing what a big personality um, Mixologic is and having Mixologic, having, having them having to deal with that is, is difficult. So I would have loved to have seen how they would have tackled that because I've seen someone like that with a huge personality having to deal with Alzheimer's and dementia and this, this battle, you know, in their own brains, you know, about in their own minds with that. So, yeah. Nice. nice. I don't know okay. if I have any questions. I don't, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I have any questions. Uh, you, can you show us your dog? What's his name? Books? Books. Books. Okay. We want to see books. Show everybody books. Say hi, buddy. He just woke up. Say hi. <laughs> Look, say hi. Right here. Up here. <laughs> What's going on, y'all for the people? That was school no books. Here. This is good. School <laughs> books. What's up, books? Say hi to Kwame. School what? books. What up? <laughs> yeah. Oh um, man. Well, gentlemen, it has been so great. I am so elated, so happy, so excited that you all agreed to come here and party with us over here and talk to us and have some candid conversations and some great I thought the discussion today was great. I thought we had some really Likewise. good yeah, um, thank you. Um, talks and discussions today. We are about to go backstage to the after party. I think type well just another second or two after we um, go off. I want to say to my um subscribers and everybody in the chat watching live or watch the replay. Thank y'all. Y'all know, as I always say, I love y'all. I love all y'all. Thank you all for being vocal present and active. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for any and all um, contributions that you make to the channel. Y'all know I'm always here for y'all. Shondo's in and about the chat and so forth. Um, y'all have anything y'all want to say to the people who are watching, all of your fans who were swooning for you? Yes, the people uh, was watching you. You was half naked, uh, Kwame. And when you were half naked too, Arlen, because that's what they do. So you know, y'all have anything y'all want to say to the people before you get out, Chip? Uh, I just, just want to say... Pretty... Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go. You go. You go first. Sure. Um, yeah. I just want to say that uh, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Um what we do as actors is an absolute blessing. It's something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. And I'm grateful that people are along the ride with me and are enjoying it. I'm glad to be here with my brother Kwame. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm just thankful. I'm really Y'all really really did think y'all was down for season three, right? Hey. Oh, listen, definitely. Listen, yeah, okay. If, if it happens, I'm, just, yeah, we there. Yep. <laughs> and the same, I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched and supported who tweeted, who commented, man. Like I said, as a like as Arlen said, as an actor, man, it's just a blessing to be able to step into a role like this. This literally was a a role in a dream come true. Yeah. So thank you. It's thank a you. blessing. It's definitely a blessing. Yes. Blessing. All right. Y'all hold tight. Um uh, Kwame and Arlen. We're about to go back to the after party. Thank y'all, everybody in the um chat. And thank y'all, everybody watching. Until next time, that's all we got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.